Okay, good evening. So Wednesdays, I think I'm going to start answering questions again, which um, may mean shorter videos sometimes, we'll see. Tonight might be a shorter talk. But there'll be questions that relate to practice, so you're, again, you don't have to come for all the talks, but certainly welcome to come listen. So tonight I'm going over a question, a couple of older questions that I think are related and have a general applicability to meditators, Buddhists, people, to to the problems that we face as sentient creatures. It's the topic of problems. More specifically, I suppose, what's of great interest is problems with meditating. Problems that keep us from meditating problems that cause us to struggle when meditating. And so it, the, the question comes for people who are interested in meditation. Some people who are interested in meditation is how to deal with extreme conditions, problems. Some people have such problems that they seem incapable of practicing. Yeah. We're not just talking about struggle. We're talking about the incapacity to practice meditation. It could be because of a neurotic impulse or state of mind. It could be because of a physical ailment. Things that get in the way of our practice. And so it's important to note that the bad news is there are certain things that will get in the way of, of your meditation practice that will prevent you from practicing. Some people may not be able to practice meditation. The good news is that it's not so much in terms of them not being able to solve their problems. Um, and you don't have to actually solve your problems. But it has to do with an incapacity and this will this will be the case. For some people they're incapable. When you come here you're you're taking on a task. When you begin to practice meditation on your own as well, you're undertaking a task to, to change something, to do something, to gain something. And I'm here to help you do it. I'm here to guide you through it. But we may be incapable. We may fail. Each and, each and every one of you, when you come here, we're a partnership. I may fail in teaching you the right things. You may fail in practicing them. Together we may fail. That's the bad news. But the good news again, it's not because you had problems that were insurmountable, but that we were unable to create we were unable to do the task that needed to be done, which is not solving your problems. And so the question here about how to deal with these problems someone had neurotic fear, another person had intense, chronic pain, 
prevented them from meditating. All of you have, uh, I'm sure, problems, not that necessarily prevent you from meditating, but make it a struggle. We all, when we come to meditate, we have problems. They get in our way. How do we deal with these? So there are two principles that we have to understand. Again, to make clear, I didn't quite make it clear. The good news is that you don't have to fix your problems. That's the wrong way of looking at it. So the good news is the way to solve this or, or fix this is to change the way we look at the problem, to change our way of looking at things. And there's two aspects to this. One is in terms of what we see and what is really there. And there's a very powerful verse that I don't think it's from the Buddha, but it's in one of the commentaries. It says, it's one of these verses where the commentator of the Buddha's teaching, they're, they're commenting on the Buddha's teaching, and they say, De nahu purana, thus said the ancients, or the old ones. And it's understood to meant, have meant the probably the arahants in the time of the Buddha, the teachers who passed on the Buddha's teaching what they would say when when uh, it wasn't something the Buddha said, it was something someone said, some Buddhist, don't, don't know who. And this verse goes, Yang pasati na tang di tang, yang di tang na tang na pasati. Yang di tang, yang pasati na tang di tang, what he sees, that is not seen. Yang di tang tang na pasati, what is seen, that he does not see. Apas apasang bhajate mulho bhajamana bhajamano namuchati. Not seeing, he is bound. Being bound, he is not free. It's a bit of a riddle, actually. What he sees, that is not seen, and if you. But to take it out of the Buddhist context, it might seem, well, like a riddle. But it's an important and powerful statement. This is on the commentary of the Satipatthana Sutta, the commentary on the Sutta on mindfulness. So it's an important thing to think of. What is seen, and what we see, what we see, uh, if, if, if what we see is not what is actually seen, then we have a problem, right? Meaning, when, when we see problems, when we have problems, uh, then we have a problem. Because the problems are not what, we, what is actually seen. They're not what is, what is actually there. This, so the first part is in regards to what is seen and what is actually there. And the second part is in regards to our relationship to it and our response and our kicca, our work, our task in relation to it. So problems are not there. Problems are not what is there. What is there is experience, I think is probably the best way to put it. Experiences, moments of experience. And the quality of these two very different things is like night and day. A problem is constant. It's always there. It's a thing, right? It doesn't have a moment when it arises and when it ceases. A problem is to be fixed. It's yours, it's an entity, it's a thing, it has a life or a reality of its own. Experiences, on the other hand, are momentary. They aren't me or mine, they don't have any entity. 
there's no fixing or or and there's there's not even any vocabulary about fixing or changing at all. What would it mean to fix an experience? Right? We fix a problem. Can we fix an experience? No, the experience is gone. It's gone already. Why would you even, you know, what, what would be the, the thing that you would be fixing, right? There's no vocabulary, there's no relationship there. So our, our perception of what's there has, has to change. That's the first aspect of the goal of meditation practice. The second is our relationship to it. So when we talk about fixing problems, we have to understand that this is the way we look at things. It's bound up in seeing problems, seeing entities and things. And it's bound up in a process by which we relate to things. This is a problem, I'm going to fix it. Right? The, the process is about fixing. So we have two, two parts, the problem and the fixing. We have the thing and the task. And that's, um, that's a um, good way of breaking it down because that's how the Buddha talked about reality and the Four Noble Truths. He talked about, or the Four Noble Truths. He said, we have suffering and then we have something we're going to do about it. The problem and the, the task. But the, in, in Buddhism, it's not about problems and fixing them. It's about reality and seeing it understanding it. So our relationship to reality has to change, not just seeing re reality. I mean, it, it happens at the same time. It's not you do one and then the other, but it has two qualities to it. Not only do we have to look at things differently, but we have to then relate to them differently. So instead of trying to, and, and it, it, it really happens at the same time again, it's just two qualities, two parts of the same thing. But trying to fix things is not the task, right? When we talk about the truth of suffering, Buddhism is about escaping suffering. No, it's not. The task in regards to suffering, the Buddha said, is parinyaya. We need to see it completely, I'm oh, sorry, understand it completely. Know it. Nyaya just means to know. Parinyaya means to understand. So when we talk about problems, I mean, it's not to trivialize the great pain that some people might feel or their incapacity to practice as a result of it or the neurotic behavior, the neurotic qualities of mind, the even psychotic uh, episodes, things that get in the way. But the solution, if there is one, and if it's going to be successful, which it's not going to be successful in all cases, but if it is to be successful, is not in terms of solving problems. It's in terms of seeing reality, understanding reality. And so when you have pain, it's not about making the pain go away. It's about, rather than back pain as a problem, it's experiences of pain and being able to see the moments of pain and instead of trying to make the pain go away, try and understand your reactions to it. Oh yes, it's because I want it to go away that I'm suffering. Maybe you're bored sitting in meditation, and you think, well, this is boring. It's, uh, the problem is not sitting in meditation. The problem is that you are bored of it. Maybe you have an addiction problem, and uh, you know, the problem you think is food, or it's... Anyway, the, the problem is not the experience of food or sex or music or uh, art, beauty. The problem is our relationship to it, how we deal with it, 
our our fix, getting our fix of the thing we desire. And so this is what we mean by talking about the three characteristics. The three characteristics sum up the change that occurs from seeing things as, as having these qualities of being a, a thing, an entity, a problem, or a solution even. The solution, like something that we want, when I get it, that will be the, that will make me happy. Seeing, seeing things differently, the qualities of problems and solutions have our, our stability, satisfaction, control. That's how we're looking at it. We're looking at it as a, a thing that we can solve and and be happy. You know, fix and, and be satisfied by it. When you change that and you look at things differently and you see experiences, well, they have three very different qualities, three opposite qualities. They are impermanent. They are changing all the time. There's nothing there. The idea that one would be a problem couldn't even arise. They are not able to satisfy. There's no solution. There's no way to solve them, to fix them, to keep them, right? To make them satisfy you. And they're not you, they're not, they're not yours, they're not under your control. You can't change that. You can't make them be other than what they are. They're not, you can't force reality to be different. Right? It's just not in the vocabulary of experience that it should be something you can control or, or manipulate. And so this is the change that has to occur. We have to change from looking at problems and solutions and really me and mine and all of this and entities, like things, you know, and start to see in terms of the experiences, what's going on behind, behind all of that. And it's not to say that this is easy or this is going to occur, but it's an important paradigm shift from struggling with our problems and uh, finding a, a way out and a way forward and a way to change and free ourselves from suffering it requires us to change our whole goal, really, our whole direction from solving things and, and fixing things to seeing things and understanding things. It's kind of um, very foreign, I think. This is, this is this, I'm stressing this because it's very foreign. When you go to a doctor and to, to ask about pain, I think you'd be hard pressed to find one that would add, that would encourage you to understand the pain. But that's basically what we're doing. We are, in a sense, acting in the capacity of of well, we're we're doctors for ourselves. We're we have pain is a good example. This isn't just mental, but these are physical problems. When you go to the doctor, it's a problem that has a solution. Take a pill, for example, or exercise, or, or however. When you come here, it's an experience that has to be understood. When you understand it, you know, understand your pain, that will, that will solve your problems. Or that will, it won't solve your problems. It will change the way you look at things. It will change your reality to trying to solve pro from from trying to solve problems to trying to understand and wake up. Because solving problems doesn't this is the point doesn't free you from suffering. It has to do with the quality of mind. Where this isn't a philosophical topic issue problem. It's a 
practical one. When you engage in problem, in the creation of problems and the fixing of problems, that quality of mind uh, hits an impasse. It, it is incapable of becoming free from suffering. Why? Because a problem is an abstract concept. When you say, I have chronic pain, for example, your, your mind is not in tune with reality. Right? Reality doesn't have these problems or solutions. Reality has experiences, and so you're out of that when you're thinking in terms of problems and solving them. You're out of touch with, with uh, the mechanism, the mechanics of reality. When you instead engage in, this is real, this is this, that is that, understanding, it doesn't mean understanding in an intellectual way, it means really just seeing it. Oh, it's like this, oh yes. This is how the mind is working. This is what's going on in the mind. This is what's going on. This is what's really here. Then you're in touch with reality. And that's really all it takes. Suffering comes because we're ignorant. This is the, Buddha, the essence of Buddhism. This is why we talk about the Four Noble Truths. What are the Four Noble Truths? They're wisdom. They're things we have to see. Truth. We don't know the truth. We can't handle the truth sometimes. So here's a question for you. Can you handle the truth? Can you? Mm -hmm. Well, come to see the truth. And truth, of course, is a big word that becomes a, a buzzword, really. It's not, this isn't some religious truth or doctrine. It's just the very simple truth, right? The simple, what, what is really true? It's not true that we have problems. That's, a, that's an abstract way of looking at things. You say, I have a pain problem. I have a problem with this phobia or, or, or whatever. No, you don't have a problem. There are, there are experiences and they arise and cease. It's much more accurate. And because it's much more accurate, it's much more powerful in terms of helping you to oh, free yourself from suffering. So in regards to, I think it's in regards to a lot of questions that come in about having this problem or that problem. I think it's a good way, a good part of the solution. <laughs> Though again, it, the solution is to stop looking for solutions. Stop looking in terms of problems and solutions. So that's the Dhamma for tonight. Thank you all for listening.